Hello and welcome to another episode of Attacking Third, a CBS Sports soccer podcast. I'm Sandra Herrera, lead NWSL writer for CBS Sports. Joined today, as always, by my colleague and co-host, Lisa Roman, broadcaster and analyst for NWSL and CBS Sports. On today's episode, we have a special segment for the month of February celebrating Black History Month. Be sure to subscribe to us on YouTube so that you never miss out whenever we go live or our exclusive interviews. Today, we welcome the first ever Black head coach in the NWSL, former MLS defender and current head coach of the Orlando Pride, Seb Hines. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh, we're so, we're, listen, we're thrilled to have you here in Attacking Third. It's, it's your first time uh, here on the show. Uh, we've talked to a lot of players uh, and, and lots of other folks in the space. And every so often, whenever we get a chance to get a coach on, it's always a delight because we actually don't get too many coaches no. oh, really? on the show. So we're so happy. <laughs> yeah, we're so happy to have you here uh, and, and really excited to chat with you um, because we're gearing up for, for preseason. And NWSL. So let's maybe just start with that right now. How how are you and then the coaching staff uh, uh, preparing for for preseason with the team? We're we're super excited. We just want to get going. Um, you know, we've got a lot of new phases here. Um, I thought we were very successful in the draft. We got some really good picks in the draft, and we're excited to bring them on board and get them going and get a feel for what it's like to to be an Orlando Pride player. Um, no, we had a taste of it last year. Uh, we had a like a mini preseason, midseason uh, when we took over. Um, but it would be nice to really start from day one and and go over your principles, your style of play, you know, everything like from everything like that um, from the very start. So, yeah, super excited! Can't wait to get going and really looking forward to uh, to the first day of preseason. Coach, you really get to sink your teeth into this team. And it started with the draft, as you said, very successful. But for you as a head coach, what was it like navigating through your first draft in the NWSL? So, yeah, head coach role was a little bit different. Um, you know, you obviously have more say in in your recruitment uh, strategy. But overall, we knew areas of uh and positions that we need to improve on we and areas that we needed to fill positions uh within the team and you know we we're re really happy we managed to cover every position other than the goalkeeper position um and a lot of the players uh that we identified you know they, they've had success in the collegiate level can they now take it into the professional level and uh, really challenge themselves and test themselves against some of the best players in the world. I want to ask about one of your draft picks because there were five that Orlando was able to grab in the NWSL draft, but number three overall, it was defender Emily Madrill, and she's going to Orlando. This was huge for her, huge for her family. She's formerly in Florida State University. What drew you to a player like Emily Madrill? Um, I think since I started uh, working with the Pride, I've always identified Emily as a as a top talent, a top player. Um, you know, preseason we we'd always scrimmage against FSU, and she was always one that stood out. Um, being a local player as well, you know, having them ties to Florida, I think, is important. It also gives a pathway to uh, young players who are in this area that it is possible to go all the way to pro. Um, so. You know, she's a she's a great person. She's a great professional already. She's already had experience from going to Sweden and and being in a professional environment. And and she's ready. She's ready for the challenge of the NWSL. Um, so again, I think on behalf of the whole organization, we're really pleased to get a player like Emily Emily Madrill here, uh, Alanda Pride. It's so cool to sort of hear how you've been navigating these these early months and early weeks uh, as a as a head coach with your with your recent promotion as as the head coach of the team. You you made a bit of, of history the as the first ever black head coach in the NWSL and uh, here in the United States, the country preparing to celebrate Black History Month in, in February. But for you, what is what does it mean to you personally to sort of break that kind of barrier here in the league? Yeah, it's massive. I'll. Um... You know, as you can tell by my voice, I'm I'm English, but my dad was American. Um, you know, I I grew up with uh, American traditions. Um, my my dad's family are all based in North Carolina, Greensboro, North Carolina. So, 
you know, it's it's a very important piece of who I am. Um, it's a very proud moment when I went up to see them over Thanksgiving. You know, it's great to to see you know my family and what they've what they've been through and what they've overcome over you know multiple uh, years. So for me to be the first black head coach in the NWSL was a, a really proud moment for myself and my family. So. Yeah, um, I'm truly grateful for not only the opportunity, but to also um, set uh, some history. You know, it it went from you went from the intern role to to head coach, so it was one of these kind of weird gray area lingering things where folks were looking uh, to see and make connect the dots of if this was the the first ever, and then finally with this promotion that sort of makes it uh, official. It, when you're finding yourself sort of navigating the responsibilities of this role as a head coach. Uh, you know, I know at times for, for folks who have to navigate spaces as the minority, so to speak, sometimes there comes with that a certain layer of responsibility, uh, perhaps to do well or succeed in these roles. Um, is that something that you embrace? Is that something that you feel? And um, how are you looking to sort of uh, take that on for yourself? Yeah, uh, I think you said it there. Anytime you step into a head coach's role, you know, there's a there's a level of responsibility and leadership and also like, you know, setting a pathway for others. Uh, I think that's really important as I take this role that, you know, I'm always going to do it to the best of my ability. And, you know, we talk about, you know, you know setting pathways as players um, and, using that as a, a motivator. Um, I think now with me in this position it is, it is a big responsibility, but I also want other, other coaches to know that it is possible. And, you know, when you get that opportunity, you, you, you have to take it. Um, and the more exposure, the more opportunity that we're given to more minority coaches, um, I'm, I'm sure everyone will succeed uh, in in that position and that's what that's what I'm here to do I'm I'm here to succeed and and bring the best out of Orlando Pride and bring the best out of the players the staff that are around me you know everything that we do we want to do to the best of our ability so I'm I'm really excited to to be given this opportunity and I'm, I I won't take it lightly I'm, I'm going to be working countless hours <laughs> trust me <laughs> I'll be working so hard it sounds like you maybe already have. It's the off season. Are you still, are you putting in overtime already? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I might need to use my PTO or something. <laughs> PTO, but, clocking yeah. it in before preseason even starts. <laughs> uh, no, but I, I love it. Like this, this is the game that I've grew up with. I've, is, I don't know anything else. I've played the game, you know, since I was seven years old, I've, you know, I've gone all the way to the highest level as a player. Now, you know, I'm in this uh, position now as a head coach, coaching at the highest level. So I, it's not something that I take lightly. I understand my position and I really want to bring success to Orlando Pride because I've been here for eight years, you know, three years as a player. I've, I've been a, a um a volunteer for two years with the pride i've worked my way up to this position now and you know i've i've i really want to bring success to to this club you have had a, a journey to get to where you are right now and that includes playing at the highest level professionally and, and then as you just mentioned being a volunteer being an assistant being an interim head coach and now being a head coach when you look back at all those various experiences and your stepping stones to get you where you are to here what of those experiences do you lean on now as a head coach patience i guess uh <laughs> persistence um and and being a good person like uh anyone who knows me i'm i'm very down to earth um you know my my son plays youth soccer i'm very approachable people you know uh parents will come ask me questions and stuff and you know, I, I make people welcome, you know, we're a very inclusive um, place here. Um, I'm always wanting to give back to, to the people around me. Um, you know, if anyone needs help, I'm, I'm there to help, you know, you, you know, it's a, it's a very welcoming place. And, and having gone through them experiences myself as being a volunteer, someone had to take a chance on me. Um, and, and I had to learn. Um, 
whilst uh, whilst I was here. So um, yeah, I'm I'm super grateful. I learned a lot from being a player because obviously as a player you only see like the one side been mm-hmm. been on the other side uh, the off field stuff um there's so much work um put into everything um and a lot of organizing a lot of um uh you know strategies you know you you got to get a lot of things in place let's say so um yeah with them experiences I've learned a lot and it's it's put me in a, a good position uh, where I'm at right now it's almost like a little bit more paperwork versus just like go out there and play. <laughs> I, the game. I got I got paper every. <laughs> <laughs> As for, if, if, if our listeners are, are only listening well. to this and can't see the background, Seb is joining us with the whiteboard in the background, yeah. along with all of his notebooks. It's amazing. Yes, with with all the papers you have, I, I want to ask you as a former defender. Once you started coaching, maybe it's a little bit different now because you have been on the other side of the white line for so many years now. But when you first started coaching, or even now, do you find yourself viewing the game still from a defender's perspective, or do you have a different perspective when you coach? You know, it's funny you say, you say that. And yes, I was I was a defender, Lisa. I, I was a centre back. I I love to head it and kick it and do the dirty work. But honestly, like we play the game to to play football, and that's that's been my ethos since I started. Like, enjoy having the ball. Enjoy creating opportunities to score. Like, that's the fun part. Now there's obviously two sides of the game and everyone has to play their part in defending, you know, forwards oh, have yeah. to defend, midfielders have to defend <laughs> and, you know, defenders have to defend. Um, I don't actually like using the term defenders because everyone who doesn't have the ball is defenders. So I agree. I'm a former defender and, and yeah. we at attacking third, we love defense. We love talking about defenders. Um, but yeah, everyone is defending starts yeah. with your striker up top yeah. and then it yeah. just yeah. trickles down. And I think with like the evolution of the game now, like you see a lot of teams play out from the back, you know, now the center backs have to be probably some of the most creative players in, on the fields. You know, you, you have to start attacks. You've got to play through the lines. You've got to, you know, find the space sometimes for a forward to run onto like that, that now is the evolution of the game. You have to be so all rounded in, in your um, identity. Um, let's say, or your player profile, you have to be like, you have to check so many boxes now um, because the game's uh, evolving so quickly. Let's uh, let's stay with this, this energy. We're talking tactics and, you know, in terms of folks who are keeping track in terms of their off season trackers for the pride, along with a pretty successful uh, draft event, uh, the club also announced a ton of re-signings and acquisitions, uh, specifically uh, the resigning of, of Marta and her return to Orlando, the signing of uh, Adriana. So a couple of Brazilian internationals that you've got with the squad. Are, we know uh, that, you know, Marta's uh, coming off of, of rehabbing a, a extended injury. Are there plans to acclimate her slowly into the group? And how do you see a player like uh, uh, Adriana fitting into, into the squad as a, as a first-year player? Yeah, um, I mean, Marta's... He's... She's some player. Um, she's incredible. Uh, and it, it was a big injury for her. It was a, a moment in her career that she hasn't experienced. And and just to sum her personality on, she she flew past flew past the um the rehab stages like rapidly. It was incredible. We had to like tone her down a little bit, like hold on, hold on, you need to uh do the right uh, uh measurements and make sure their knees fully intact and and you know everything that you do in a in a, a post surgery but she's she's a great advocate for uh, being a professional you know she she like wants to win everything honestly it's it's incredible she whether it's like a 5v5 tournament or it's the world cup final like she treats it exactly the same and for the young players that are in our environment like they can look at her and 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 be like, wow, she. This is why she was, you know, five time player of the year. Um, so having her back is 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 really helpful for us. I know we missed her, uh, missed her creativity, her work ethic um, last year, but it also allowed a lot of players to step up and and get exposure of the league. And with our young roster um you know they they're a year ahead of where they probably would have been if we had a, a you know a full 
um, veteran 11 on the field. So I think it's great. It shows development. It shows that we're willing to give young players an opportunity um, and we're willing to teach them, you know, what better environment to to learn than being on the field against some of the best players in the world. So um, they have to use that momentum now going into next year. Um, but also with someone like Marta, they can look at and she'll she'll do that work. We talked about, you know, defend uh, defenders like she will defend at the front because she wants that ball so much. Um, and when we sign someone like Adriana, she has she has similar qualities. You know, she's she's very good technically. She's got an eye for goal. Her work ethic is incredible. And I think that's important to see when you when you bring in world class players like that. And they're doing the little bits, you know, the work ethic, the tracking back, the the defending, the you know, them little things go so far when you know what they can do going into the attack. So she was a really big signing for us, um, and and that's what we're looking for when we're trying to recruit players, the players who who are game changers like Adriana and Marta, but they're they're willing to do the little things as well. Seb, I was already excited to watch Orlando this year. Now you're getting even more jazzed up to see them in purple take the field. Uh, for you as interim head coach at the end of last year, you got a taste of the NWSL, the competition, even as an assistant. But now with a full season ahead of you, you get to implement your tactics and what you want from day one, from recruiting these players, from drafting them, from signing new players. It's a blank slate for you. What are you and your main goals for this team in 2023 as you assemble them for preseason? Well, we we want to be competitive. I think that's that's important. We want to get to a good start and and build momentum. Um, even even with everything that went on last year, um, we still had a run at playoffs. Like we we came really close. There's always a moment that defines it, and I think when Rapino scored that 93rd minute uh, winner, like it, it, it was a sucker punch, but what a great learning uh, mechanism for us to, to go back and say, right, these are the little things that are going to push us over that line. Um, back to the, your, your last question, you know, it was important that we uh, re-signed a lot of the players who were out of contract, um, you know, having that, that team cohesiveness, um, that team togetherness and them leaving the season wanting more. They didn't actually want the season to end. They knew that they were onto something, you know, bigger and better. And this period, this off season period has been, it's been long um, and everyone's been itching to get back. So it was important that we, we brought a lot of our players from last year back. We've obviously added some players as well. Um, and yeah, like from day one, they know that it's going to be hard. It is going to be miserable in preseason. Um, but, you know, it's getting past that mental barrier of like, okay, when you go into games, no one is going to give you three points. Like no one does that. This league is one of the most competitive leagues. Um, you have to earn respect. You have to earn your right to play. And that will be our message from day one is is that you you got to earn everything that you that you get um winning's hard <laughs> it's hard it's not easy and um with the staff we're we're all all together with that we're all aligned with that we've all um had experience of playing so we know what it takes and it's it's not easy it's hard work and getting your head down and being determined to to be successful Coach Hines, I'm amped. I'm like, you know, I'm hearing you talk about that now, like about the the pride and the energy that you all want to carry into into preseason and through the regular season. I'm replaying a lot of those um those games in my head right now during 2022 games that we had to recap on on attacking third and uh, how Orlando was not only kind of playing spoiler at times but going on that run and and sort of 
making everyone else kind of pump the brakes. Um, it's going yeah. to be exciting to see what the team uh, builds on in 2023. You know, whenever we get, get towards the end of our interviews with, with guests, uh, specifically players, we always like to get a little more personable, maybe ask some fun questions uh, with them. And we'd like to do that with you to sort of close out. A lot of times we lean into the sort of uh, the routine of it all. Uh, players, if they have a go-to beverage, uh, sort of pre or post training, uh, what is their go-to sideline stack? Uh, if they have to have something uh, to keep them going throughout the game, and we're going to pitch you the the same questions: Is there right. something that you go to, even if it's just for com, even if it's just for comfort, um, to sort of have as part of your routine that you uh, is your first choice? Yeah, it, it's funny because we were having this conversation, and as a player, like I had to get myself like amped up, like I had to get myself really going. Um, so <laughs> I used to like I used to have a Red Bull before every game. <laughs> <laughs> oh you're one of you are one of those <laughs> yeah but I've I've continued that into coaching now where wow. I'll have a Red Bull as well um and then I don't know if you see like I'll have um, some Skittles uh in my pocket just to chew on um I, I like the wild berry ones um but, oh, so you're not even yeah. just a traditional Skittle guy, the wild yeah, berry. That's like yeah. the purple I'm bougie, pack. I'm bougie, yeah. <laughs> yes. I'm yeah, in bougie. agreement. That's like a during the game, like you'll snack on the Skittles. Yeah, I'll just like, okay. you know, I'm, I'm glad you relieved that because that would have been a follow up. I would have been like, hold on a second, which which Skittles? Everybody thinks that it's always one, but you got variety out there. So I yeah. love that. All right, Red Bulls and Skittles. Uh, every, yeah, I don't know. I think if it might be terrible diet, but <laughs> what a coach. I love it. Uh, Seb, thank you so much for joining us today on Attacking Third. We appreciate it. you taking the time uh, at the start of the, the preseason here to, to join us. Uh, best of luck in the upcoming regular season. And thank you to everybody for joining us and listening along uh, to our interview with Coach Hines and uh, happy Black History Month. Uh, good luck uh, or to Orlando Pride. Everyone listening, make sure you download, follow, and subscribe to us anywhere you get your podcast. You could watch us to subscribe at youtube.com slash attacking third to get alerts for whenever we go live in our exclusive interviews. For Sandra Herrera, Lisa Roman, and Sevines, this was Attacking Third.